The Wife Upstairs by Rachel Hawkins. When the novel was published in 1847 Jane Eyre, Charlotte Bronte never imagined that her heroine Tragic and Staub aimed at changing the role of women in literature. Not only was this a purposeful female character, but one, in addition, surrounded by powerful personalities that showed readers the prevailing perceptions of gender at the time. Bronte created a narrative structure, capable of sustaining the hardest moments in its history and also giving life to an attractive and powerful personality. All in the middle of the usual setting with gothic reminiscences, a hidden secret, and a potentially deadly, or at least infamous, circumstance that lurks from the shadows, the writer Rachel Hawkins takes the best of Bronte's novel and renews the proposal, from an intriguing look at the identity of contemporary women, mixed with the codes of mystery and traditional suspense. Known for her supernatural romance novels for young audiences, Hawkins takes a considerable risk with a wife upstairs, a seemingly simple story about a small domestic tragedy, which turns into an ingenious mechanism of terror. The narration is surprising for all the resources that the author uses to show the journey of her protagonist to turn from an ordinary woman to a heroine in the middle of a misfortune. However, it is not a journey marked by fear, but by self-discovery, which allows the writer to build a version on the pressure of the emotional and intellectual suffering of her character, much more intuitive and sensorial. The Jane of Hawkins it is curious that the writer has even baptized her central character with the same name as the work she refers to. She is trapped in a painful labyrinth that begins and ends in a loveless marriage. But beyond the existential anguish that Jane endures in the midst of the uneasiness of a secret to keep, there is also a space in her mind in which the need to rebuild her own identity is stronger than anything else. Hawkins is smart enough to reflect on how Jane's intellectual and moral journey will take her to unknown places in her own life, to rethink her story from a new dimension, and finally to develop a conception of faith, pain, and release entirely new. The story joins several plot threads to create a complex puzzle that ends up having a mysterious core. Hawkins is much more interested in the journey of Jane to find the fundamental moments of his life, than to construct a hypothesis about how suffering can change him. And that is perhaps one of the most intriguing elements of a novel that creates a well-constructed narrative mechanism from the enigmatic, to find an atonement to the emotional tension that it sustains from the first chapter. But above all, The Wife Upstairs incorporates humor and the perception of the domestic as an elaborate proposal that bases its sense of opportunity on the way in which the author elaborates a premise. What if one day, you discover that everything you believe in is false? Of course, it is a journey through the version and the duplicity of reality, something that also allows the conception of the truth to become mutable and ambiguous as the plot progresses. Hawkins, who until now created witty mysteries and self-concluding novels with powerful female characters, succeeds in The Wife Upstairs, a novel journey through the conception of the home environment and the ordinary, slightly distorted. What happens when we cannot distinguish what we believe is real from what is not? Where can the conception of the mind as a space for the reconstruction of the visible and tangible lead to something more confusing? All this, together with the vicissitudes of a character who made the conscious decision to face a traumatic event through the condition of deciding what to believe or not to believe. This J. A. N. I. R. O. F. A. New Millennium, he carries a cell phone instead of a notebook, he reads on his computer screen instead of taking refuge in the pages of a book and secretly loves a powerful man, who is neither irascible nor distant, but keep a secret. As if it were a thread between two realities. Hawkins manages to construct a simple but eloquent way of using the meta-reference to the classic as an elaborate construction on his own conception of time. Because in The Wife Upstairs, the ambiguity of intentions is everything. Set in a middle-class suburb of Birmingham, Alabama, Jane begins the story by making it clear that this is not her real name. Or it could be, but that for her, it is not of interest that it is easy to guess. The identity game becomes indicative of something deeper a simple eventuality to reduce the weight of their individuality or something more dangerous. After all, Jane Neid also has no past. His arrival in Birmingham happens at night and in the midst of all kinds of precautions, the prologue that narrates the scene is a mixture of imagination and ways of constructing an independent speech that surprises with his ability, and once he establishes himself in the neighborhood, does not mention the name of the place. Nor does she describe the place where she lives. What made her abandon the previous one, far from it, the reasons why the enigma that surrounds her is so important to her. We are our secrets. Those we carry, we hide and what we believe, we can hide with a new name, hair dye. 
and an unrecognizable accent. Hawkins never indicates who Jane was prior to arriving in Birmingham, but makes it clear that her escape, wherever it may have come from, was swift, poorly planned, and that Alabama, it was an almost accidental fate. Furthermore, it is a perception about the notion of self in a hypertechnified and communicated age. Jane makes it clear that social networks could be the key to information that cannot be controlled immediately so she dispenses with them. But he also knows that being completely invisible implies being visible to some extent. So he has a Facebook account that he never updates and on Twitter, he hardly comments on the weather and a few pictures of his shoes. To disappear convincingly, you have to leave some red herrings. Jane is also going through a difficult situation. She barely has any money to survive her new life, so she starts a dog walking in the very luxurious gated community. At first, their mere presence causes suspicion and suspicion, I'm young and beautiful after all, she says as she passes by, but later, she manages to blend in with the community and gain the trust of her neighbors by the simple method, resembling them. She dresses like the woman who is her neighbor, cuts her hair like the reverend's wife, and buys cheap jewelry very similar to those worn by several of the girls from the social club. In the end, Jane, who walks dogs, takes selfies in which her face never appears at all and laughs out loud, she becomes one more. The delegate of the municipality for public works invites him to eat, he shares a reading club with the divorced women. Her appearance and also her way of behaving is as generic as it is unclassifiable, which makes her part of something more elaborate. There is a plan behind every decision made by Jane. Neither his attire, nor his clothes, hair, or manner of speaking are casual, and Hawkins makes it clear. Each costume must be perfect because if it is not, it will be a striking cartoon. He thinks about it as he drags the ever-growing group of purebred dogs, in shiny fur and rhinestone collars, through the pristine streets of the suburb. Say hello, accept cups of coffee, share recipes. A chameleon changes color, but in reality, what makes its disguise true is the way it hides between simplicity, he says while laughing the joke of an unknown woman, whom he convinced that they had met before in a social club. Before, a year, a decade. But now he knows that I am here, that perhaps he can trust me, 